This is hard. So if you've been watching my channel over the last two months, then you know that I have been practicing or learning violin religiously in the last two and a half months and I love it. I've been doing it every single day. I think in the last 70 something days or 80 days, I've only missed like five days of practice, which is quite incredible. Every single day I have picked up that instrument and I've pl played it. That is a huge accomplishment for me. And the second thing is that I've, I'm actually sounding better each time. Like every day, every week, every month, I'm getting better. And so there's so much there that just brings a lot of joy in my life. Um, and yeah, so I thought I'll do a video just to kind of share with you my tips as a beginner, adult beginner, um, on what you should think about as you are starting to learn a new instrument and specifically violin. The first thing I'll say is obviously if you can afford it and if you have the time I would encourage you to get a teacher because there's a reason why <laughs> teachers are teachers, music teachers, because I think uh, when without a teacher you run the risk of learning bad habits and not really knowing the right ways to do things. Uh, not having feedback um, loops of, with somebody to tell you when you're doing great or when you're not doing great. So the first thing is if you can't afford to get a teacher, even if it's like once a month, once every whatever, it's just someone to, to have a touch point with, I think it's really useful. In my case, I started with a teacher. I took two classes um, and in those two classes, honestly, we just went through the first page of the Su Suzuki book one, meaning I didn't actually learn anything really and I think I got intimidated in terms of I thought I just was never gonna be able to play until a year from now and so I thought okay I'll come back in a year once I get some fundamentals done but I would actually encourage you to do the opposite if you can but of course this video is about how to teach yourself how to learn violin as an adult so I just thought I would, would kind of need to tell you if you can't afford it, just do it. Get a teacher. You, you'll be really happy about it because it will save you time of unlearning bad habits. In terms of actually learning how to play violin or how to teach yourself how to play violin, the first thing I would say is go online, find a guided course. There's so many people online who are um, experienced violinists or teachers who, can, who have these uh, curated courses of... Um, any instrument really so I went on YouTube and I found two teachers and I would put their links below as well uh, and then I also found a couple of people on TikTok who have uh, little micro courses on specific techniques and whatnot but I would say the first thing is find a guided course I recommend the Suzuki book uh, method or the Suzuki method because it's pretty standard and you kind of have a progressive learning rather than an independent person just making up their own course uh, that's my own preference although I know there are a number of people online who are brilliant and have their own sort of structured programs having a guided course will help you stay on course rather than just popcorning and learning as you go uh, which is what I did I kind of just initially was just playing whatever I feel like I think I first learned how to play fix you for a couple of weeks that was the song that I was keeping on practicing and uh, the cold play song and I kind of wasted time to be honest even though it was a fun song to play. The second thing is uh, once you have your actual violin, I, I can't tell you anything about violin quality and etc because I don't know much about violins um, or anything really in terms of quality and which ones are the best. But once you do have your violin, just try to learn as much as you can about the actual instrument. So learn about the bow. Apparently there's so many types of bows and I did not know that I am still learning but learn about your bow learn about the actual violin itself learn about um, The vocabulary that people use to name the parts of the violin learn about the maintenance of the violin How do you clean it because? Um, like with the rosin the sort of like a sticky 
stuff that you put on your bow it sometimes goes on your uh, on your wood how do you get rid of that like all that kind of stuff just learn the sort of technical physical technical maintenance and vocabulary things about the violin before you actually start playing this the next thing is i'll say uh music theory is critical because of the fact that it opens up your universe so massively when you don't know how to read music or when you don't understand how music works or how notes work then you're kind of going to be stuck and I mean you could probably get away with there's some videos online nowadays which are like play along videos you can definitely get away with that but when you know how to read music and you understand how notes are supposed to uh, be spaced out and whatnot it would really help you in in the long run and it's just a great skill to have I think if you are actually interested in music the next thing I have is listen to music so I did listen to classical music before playing violin to be honest I knew of classical pieces just from you know I don't know high school or uh, elementary school and just you know the basic uh, classical music that is played everywhere kind of thing but now I in intentionally listen to classical music and I now really enjoy it like I don't know this because I'm playing violin and now I'm like curious about how to play certain pieces but it really does inspire you to hear what pieces sound like in their original classical state um, and and yeah it's music is, is free in terms of like you can access a lot of this music online anyway so it's really worth having it as you're I don't know doing dishes cooking or whatever just listening to it and then tied to that is listen to other violinists like so people who play the violin or have been playing whether they're new or super seasoned or their teachers whatever it is just listen to other people play songs so if you're learning a specific piece um, listen to what someone who's been playing for a year is sounding like and listen to how someone who's been playing for 10 years and 50 years and, and so forth. Um, I think that really almost inspires you or shows you just the art of music, right? Because sometimes a piece is not like you look at it when you're reading and you think, oh yeah, this is how it's supposed to sound. But when you hear the interpretation that different people have on the piece, it's like super magical and it inspires you like you actually feel good about it and then it also gives you a sense of okay well like in my case I'm only two and a half months into my journey so I kind of have a sense of like oh okay a year from now maybe this is how I may sound like and 10 years from now hopefully this is what I'll sound like and so forth so listen to other people okay so now in terms of the uh, technique this is by far the most important part of everything learning bad technique is gonna uh, affect your playing first of all it will sound not that great because of how you're not respecting the technique and it will also uh, waste your time in that you're gonna have to unlearn bad habits like in my case there's certain things that I've learned with self-teaching and maybe watching just random videos rather than picking a guided course and then I pick on bad habits or pick up bad habits um, and then now I'm learning that I have to unlearn those things the things that I would ask you to to focus on is uh, the first thing is uh, your bow hand understand the bow you have and how to actually hold that specific bow so once you get your bow find out what type of bow it is and then Google you know or YouTube or whatever video uh, people who have that bow and then see how they hold it or just see the general way that uh, violin teachers suggest you hold your bow as a starting point um, and then the second thing is your left hand like there's so much here like your fingers need over time are going to need to learn to just move and real but it's also be super relaxed like learning how to position your hand without uh, kind of cupping your violin is going to be something you need to learn so watch a lot of videos around how to manage your left hand and um, how to hold your actual violin itself and then your bow hand um, you're also gonna have to learn how to wrist so watch as many videos as you can about wristing and do the exercises as much as possible uh, it may seem dumb when you're watching videos and they're like yeah just do certain movements and stuff like that but it's actually really useful and um, tied to both of those is 
learn how to warm up um, like warm up uh, with scales every single time that you're playing so look at it like stretching you know the way before a workout you stretch right and so it's the same thing you need to just kind of play scales and sometimes on days when I've not had time to play uh, like practice the songs that I'm working on I actually just do my scales and I've been that's a habit that I only just started doing in the last month so I think it's something that from the get-go if you start doing it you will honestly it will pay off so so much and then tied to take in the same category of technique is learning to play slowly I think a lot of people and myself included before I started playing violin I used to look at people who play fast and like da -da 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 -da, and then you're like wow those people play so fast and they're so incredible but honestly it's much much harder to play slowly if you learn how to practice songs slowly I think over time will get better we will get better because you taking that time and watching your hands both hands your bow hand and your left hand over time it actually goes a long way um, so don't be in a rush to play fast just learn how to play slowly is my thing that's all I'll say about technique in terms of motivation so this category is really interesting because like I said at the beginning you need to figure out what it is that's bringing you to learn this instrument because you're gonna need that crutch when you don't feel like playing it right finding that motivation the initial drive as to why you're learning this is going to be foundational to your learning and like i said um watching other people play the the motivation there for me comes where you watch people who played on day one and then you watch them a year later so a lot of people like on youtube have progress videos so uh they will post videos month by month or something like that of their violin journey and when you watch those videos you actually kind of see yourself it's like a mirror you're like oh my god that could be me too and so i find that that's really motivating i found that playing fun songs so it's songs that i enjoy uh i love cold play and so i i've learned a lot of cold play and i think initially m for that first month all the songs that I was learning were basically songs that were pop songs or songs that I really enjoy and so that is a form of motivation because it is the thing that kept me playing learning your favorite songs is critical and then the other way I found myself getting motivated is by leaving my violin out so my violin often just stays out in our in our living room because that way I get to see it all the time the con there is that it may the sound of the violin and the integrity of the violin might be compromised because the humidity in our houses right like uh, changes and varies so humidity affects the sound of violins is something that i learned but i'm willing to compromise that because i've not seen a horrible change in sound because i'm not experienced enough to notice um so i'm I need the motivation so because of that i just have it on a stand and i'm totally fine with it that way um and yeah so just having it out or if you're going to keep it in your case maybe keep it somewhere where you're always passing every single day so that you remember and remind yourself that hey i need to play the other thing is obviously dedicating time to play is so important i found that if you have a specific time of the day that works for you so if it's after your coffee or your tea or it's at the end of the day whatever time it is if you make it a fixed time and carve it out as such then you're more likely to play so figure out when makes most sense for you and just stick to it in my case i recently started drinking coffee a few months ago and so the routine has been after i have my coffee i play my violin so it's like a pavlovian sort of <laughs> uh, response that i have to it and so i think that allows me to kind of expect to play when i'm having coffee um and and i also think that when you carve the time you know thinking about the length of time so of course the more time you dedicate to it the more practice you're going to get the better you're going to get uh, and the more chances you're gonna have fun playing your violin but in in real life sometimes we get busy so I have a toddler and so sometimes yeah sometimes you just don't have that much time for one reason or the other and so um, I found that having at least 15 minutes a day as my base is 
good enough so if i only have 15 minutes to play every single day that's better than no minutes and so for those 15 minutes i tend to just practice my scales and um and that's it but my ideal practice time is an hour so i like to um usually split it into two but sometimes i will have a full hour if i have time or i'll split it into 30 minutes in the morning and 30 minutes in the evening that kind of thing but having dedicated time to practice and play is gonna really help you stay motivated um, and then the other thing I, I thought about was creating goals so I recently started doing this in the last month where for each practice session I think about what it is that I'm actually trying to accomplish in that section in that session it's today's practice for example I was practicing legato like playing smoothly and slurring my notes rather than da, 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 da. You know, and so um, each session I try to come up with a, okay, what is it that I'm trying to accomplish right now? And then make sure that that is the thing that guides my practice. So even if you're using a guided course, you can kind of keep that in mind as well as you're practicing where you're like, oh, by the end of today's session, I want to have done X, Y, Z. So um yeah, like having goals and even you could have weekly goals that, oh, by the end of this week or by the end of this month, I want to have learned X, Y, Z or I want to have practiced this many hours or something like that. So having goals set out and carved out is actually useful. And tied to that is like structuring your practice sessions in a way that, um, so let's say if you're doing your guided course, the one that, one of the ones that I'll recommend below is uh, 30 minutes long. And so you could do the guided session, the guided course for 30 minutes, uh, maybe start with your scales, then do the guided uh, uh, course that you pick, and then the last 15 minutes are just fun uh, play. So you can play songs that you like or something like that for the last 15 minutes of your practice. But yeah, think about how, how to actually structure your the hour that you have if you have an hour and um, so that you're not just doing the same thing the entire hour, but you're like, first 15 minutes maybe it's like scales and then the next 20 is like uh, or 30 is the a guided course and then the last 15 is something like you know your uh fun song pop song or something like that yeah the last thing on my list is just have fun the teacher that i did have at the music school emphasized that in those two sessions that we had is when you're saying you want to play violin remember the play of the playing right so usually when you think violin you might think it's too formal and stuff and really it's the opposite the more stiff you are the more tense you are the less good it sounds so just try to have a good time and relax and enjoy the instrument because these there should be no pressure when you're learning something this beautiful you should just do it because you feel like it right and you're motivated by it so so yeah to just remember to have fun but yeah so i'll end this video now <laughs> i can't believe i'm posting this how to play violin video because again like i said three months ago if someone had told me that i would actually be knowing how to play the different songs that i now know how to play i would honestly be like no there's no way but I did it and if I did it anybody can do it um <laughs> yeah learning as an adult is really hard but it's possible and it really is a joy because at this stage in my life I'm learning things because I want to not because I have to and so there's something freeing about that and it just yeah it feels great so yeah if you actually are a violin player and have been playing or any other instrument i'd love to know what your process is and if you have any other ideas you can leave them in the comment section below and i'll put i'll try to put all the links off the things that i talked about uh right at the bottom so that you know you can check them out as well but yeah i'm really happy i posted this video this video might change a year from now when i've learned more things but i thought what better time to share my current advice at two and a half months. But yeah, thank you so much for watching, you guys. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!